In today's short video, I will discuss sensor size versus sensor resolution. Welcome to John Golden Photography, I'm John. People are thinking of getting a new camera, often ask me if a camera with a higher resolution is the best way to go. That's just like asking an artist, what's the best for drawing? pencil or charcoal? In both cases, I would ask you a question, and that is, what is it that you want to do? How do you intend to present your final product to your audience? That is the question. Some pro photographers use so-called crop sensor cameras, also known as APS-C cameras, with 24 megapixel sensors such as the Nikon D3200 and the Nikon D5200, while others prefer using full-frame cameras such as the older Nikon D700, which is a 12 megapixel camera. The D700 was released in 2008, a rather old camera according to modern standards, and the D3200 and the D5200 were released in 2012, which doesn't make them new cameras, but they are significantly more advanced technologically than the D700. One would expect the newer cameras to produce better quality photos, and because of the improvement in technology over time, you would also expect them to perform better under low light conditions. That might be true when comparing similar sensors to each other. However, when comparing the APS-C to the full frame sensor, that is no longer the case. Before I go any further, you might be asking, what are APS-C and full frame sensors? Okay, let me show you an example of the sizes of these sensors. Let's look at this image, which represents the various popular sizes. This representation by no means includes all the popular sizes of the sensors, only the most common ones found. Generally speaking, smaller size sensors are found in cell phones and point-and-shoot cameras, and the larger size sensors are normally found in DSLRs. The ones that we will concern ourselves with here today are the full frame and the Nikon APS-C sensors, the two largest ones on this chart. You will notice that the full frame sensor is 26mm in diameter, while the APS-C is only 23.6mm across. Quite a significant difference in size, and surely this must have an effect on the final images they produce. The sensors have light capturing receptors on them to capture the information needed for you to be able to take a photograph. These receptors are so small that they are able to fit thousands of them side by side on the sensor. So, at a given size receptor, you are able to fit more of them up to larger sensors as opposed to smaller sensors. Also, the more megapixels a sensor has, the smaller the receptors will be. Now, due to the physical limitations of receptors, this also leads to numerous problems, such as the increase in chromatic aberrations, the inability to get sharp focus on an image, etc. Smaller receptors are not as efficient at capturing light as larger ones. Essentially, this leads to poorer quality images that this camera will produce. With that understanding, it should be evident that a small sensor with more megapixels would probably not perform as well as a camera with a larger sensor and less megapixels. As a rule of thumb, this is usually true. Even though Nikon's APS-C cameras 
produce excellent quality images. Their older full-frame cameras such as the D700 still produce uh, images of exceptional quality. Their counterparts, even though it has such a low megapixel rating, do not fare against them. So, the point of this video is to state that a camera with a very high megapixel count and a small sensor will almost certainly not produce images of the same quality from a camera with a larger sensor and a lower megapixel count. Generally speaking, the camera with a large sensor always wins the megapixel war. So, when purchasing a camera, look for one with the largest sensor you possibly can afford. Even though the, that camera might not have as much functionality as a camera with a smaller sensor, in the end, the quality of your images are the most important thing and you'll be very satisfied that you've made that good choice. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, click one of the links around me to watch another video. This is John Golden Photography. I'm John. Till next time.